That's a hell of an intro. What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> we are back. Welcome back to another episode of the Honest Tattoo Podcast. My name is John Messa, and I'm joined by my co-host, Matt Triano. Hey, how you doing? And our guest, Pony Lawson. What's up, man? How you doing? Great. So this week, we have a critique episode, and uh, we had a few artists. Some will be named, some will be unnamed, because they chose to. And uh, we're going to talk about their tattoos. Let's set it off. So well, first, let's have an introduction. Do what you normally do. Oh, yeah. Just say your name, where you're from, uh, how long you've been tattooing, and uh, what kind of tattoos do you do? My name is Pony Lawson, and I live in Chicago, Illinois, and this is my 24th year tattooing. Holy wow. shit. That's fucking sick. I'm old. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Wait, yes. so 24 <laughs> years. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I was 14 when I started. I'm okay. Old. That makes a little bit more sense. 38 soon. Okay. Carry the one. Yeah, 38. Um, and then I do a lot of realism tattoos. It's like my bread and butter, but I, I like to experiment a lot. So I've been doing a lot of gold tattoos lately, reflective stuff, maybe some neon things. But I'm, I, I do a lot of different stuff, but mainly black and gray, small realism. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Why I small? Like, <clears throat> because the big stuff, <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm ADD like crazy. I want to get back, back into the bigger stuff. But for a while, I thought the big stuff was like holding me back or I was rushing through it too much. So I felt like I could, I could give the right amount of time to a smaller tattoo rather than a big one. But now I'm like l learning new stuff. So now I feel like I can accomplish those big tattoos again. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. So we'll see where that goes. All right. Very good. Yeah. I feel like my best, you know, when I, I like doing bigger tattoos, you know, I like doing big tattoos, but the best work from those big tattoos come from like multi-session pieces, which kind of takes away that like instant gratification for both the tattooer and the client, you know, right. sure. because it's like a, it's, it's a work in progress for a while until you finally reach that moment where it's like, boom, now it's finished. And it's like, oh wow, everything just came together. Right. You know, like, uh, today I finished a tattoo and that was like four sessions, uh, and he had to fly from Canada every time. And, you know, it was a few months, you know, apart, you know, so he's been in progress, you know, with doing this for, uh, some time. And I think he maybe has like, uh, maybe 12 or 14 hours, you know, on his arm. And there's always that, like, you know, you know what's crazy is that some people are <laughs> scoffing at you like 12, 14, ugh, that's one session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like, there's a, a matter, especially for like the Japanese tattoos that I do. There's like so much of like, I could squeeze more into a session, but I know that it's probably not the best for the full outcome of the tattoo. Like when it comes to like, uh, layering blacks, you know, cause I feel like there's such an effect from just doing black on black, yeah. you know, and you get like that super rich, you know, like you can pack, you can be an excellent person that just packs black, like all, on one pass. But once you add more to a tattoo, I feel like sometimes going too hard on that first session and then on top of that, doing like a blast of color, it's too much, too much like for the client and for the skin overall. I mean, it's not that you can't do it, but I think overall, like I've, I've done like a full background, like Japanese background on someone and they're just fucking destroyed. Sure. Like, they're just like, oh my God, can this day end? And I like to end tattoos like on a good note where people feel like, oh, that was rough, but like- I'm stoked. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you know, I don't like it when I feel in a tattoo and like you're trying to take a photo and they're just like ready to just pass out. Sure. <laughs> they're traumatized. Don't want to come back. Either, yeah. Right? yeah. It was like too much, you know? Yeah. The girl that I was tattooing today, I was packing black into her knee ditch and I could have spent a little bit more time and saturated a little bit more, but I knew that we're having a second session anyway. So she was like, can we just please be done with the ditch? I was like, yeah, but we're not out of the woods because we're going back into this next session. I'm going to pack it again. Yeah. She was like, that's fine. Just leave it alone today. Yeah. I feel like it's worth it. I, I got to ask, because I, I saw this thing and it was like the gold butt plug, bro. The <laughs> yeah. gold butt plug. Tell yeah. me, about, how did that even come to be? So I've got this client, M, and they, um, <clears throat> we did... What did we do first? I think we did a black and gray um, Frankenfurter from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Sick. On their inner arm. And then we did the, uh, and we were just talking, joking about like fun tattoos that we'd like to do. And I, I don't know if like Raph came up with it or if M came up with it, but they were like, oh, gold butt plug would be sick. And I was like, please, 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 please let me do that. And they're like, yeah, let's go. And I'm like, fucking sick. So we made the appointment, got it, got it in there and it healed beautifully. Like, um, yeah, I saw the healed fit photo. Any touch ups, it, I 
couldn't be happier with how that thing came out. Yeah. Send that to me so I can put it in. The, <laughs> yeah, in the it made the uh, front page of Reddit. It's pretty wild. So uh, a lot of people got to see that thing. Yeah, like I'm telling you, like I saw that thing multiple times. Like, look at this, look at that. I'm like, that's cool. And it healed up so nice. And like uh, seeing gold tattoos like that, because like I feel like the first time I saw any of those like crazy gold tattoos, sometimes... Sometimes I look at them and I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know if that's going to heal well, you know? Right, right. Because certain decisions are made and it's like, you know, you have to make, when you're trying to create those effects, you really have to play it out. Like, all right, where am I going to, how I'm going to arrange this so it holds and so it stays solid, you know? Yeah. And I feel like that's, uh, that's the trickiest part in tattooing. Uh, it, it's not what I kind of, I would like to, you know, do myself, but I, when people do it right, man, and you nailed that shit, it fucking looks super cool. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's I mean, they can get complicated. Even that one was kind of complicated and I was hoping it would heal half as good because there were so many little areas where, um, you know, there's like lots of little Browns and like just different, uh, like tones and shapes next to each other that are cram packed in one area. Yeah. So I'm like trying to simplify it as much as I can with still keeping that like realistic look, but it seemed to uh, heal. Like I don't, couldn't ask for better. Where is that tattoo? That's on his, uh, their thigh. Oh, that's on great. On upper thigh. And they ended up getting a tattoo from, so if you look at the healed photo, uh, there is a stencil of, of a bunch of feet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they're getting that painting that's like uh, like an orgy. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know the name of the painting, but uh, yeah, they're getting a lot of wild tattoos. But Dad, this is cool. Yeah, super rad person. Yeah, I think he'll solid, man. So how big is this? Like yay big. Okay. Actual size. <laughs> actual <guess>. size. Actual. <laughs> <laughs> that should be posted like like a small actual size. <laughs> That'd be so good. Actually. I was hoping that I would get a string of emails for a bunch of people wanting them because a bunch of people commented. It's like, oh, I should get one. I should get one. Yes, you should. Let me know. <laughs> Do you have the fresh picture also? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'll send, that's I'll send that over as well. It looks good, but the hair is. Uh... Yeah. I like when it's hairy though. Healed and hairy. Yeah. Healed hairy. Yeah. 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 I want to, I want to see all that detail on that, like Jemmy yeah. crystal. But then that's cool. So I want to do more. Just people like send me some weird requests. They're like, I want a gold. Where's Waldo or something like that. I'm like, I don't know, what the fuck am I going to do with a gold? Where's Waldo? <clears throat> so talking about gold, I talk about Chrome. So there's this homie shout out to Nico. Uh, the tattoos out here in New York. Yes. I don't love and killers. And he does. He's been doing like these sick ass chrome tattoos. They just look. Yeah. What's their Instagram Uh I think it's Nico. Is it Nico Tattoo NYC? Let me see. I think I know what you're talking about though. Yeah. He's been doing some fucking sick chrome tats and I'm like, damn, that's fucking cool. Right. Those are dope. I I would love to do more of those because I feel like they're maybe not easier, but I feel like they're a lot more like delicate. Like if you're just doing black and gray and white, <laughs> I feel like maybe things might heal a bit easier. It might be less complicated. Yeah, so Nico Tattoo dot NYC. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to you, bro. You've been killing it. Um, Super dope. And I love, yeah, like this freaking chrome fucking panther. Like it's fucking gnarly. It's so crazy. Because I just, I don't know about you. I mean, you do color tattoos all the time. But when I do color tattoos, I'm just like sweating the entire time. Like, what the <laughs> fuck am I doing? Yeah. And it looks but, like he's doing a combination of like, you know, like grays, grays, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and, and packing that white in there to fucking make it all work out. And it's, and I've seen some healed ones and I'm like, damn, that looks fucking rad that oh, was yeah, really rad there yeah <clears throat> who's the artist that does all of the like chrome balloon animal looking things you ever see those i think that's nico that is nico oh uh, yeah yeah he's he started doing like a few things in chrome and then it just started to spiraling to all these yeah. other new things in chrome oh, yeah, that was cool i need a gold balloon dog I, that might be what i'm thinking of maybe because i have i saw that pop up a lot yeah that was the first one i did okay it was a gold balloon dog jeff coons yeah Shout out okay. to Jeff Coons for letting us make money. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you like uh, what? Um, Kat Von D was getting sued? Yes. Shit lately. Or yeah, attempted for, to be sued? She, yes. There was an attempt for her to get sued for uh, using a photographer's photo of Miles Davis. Yeah. Um, which that was like a tricky thing that was happening that I was like, oh man, this could affect a lot of tattooing rules depending how this goes she won that which is great for oh, she everybody did? yeah Good. she won that so that's great for everyone yeah well, otherwise we'd all have to learn how to draw <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so what, realism what was like the Fuck. what was like the wording of the ruling 
how did they say? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the final ruling was on it, but uh, it pretty much like, so like in music, right? That's why a parody is okay, right? People can make parodies of songs. That's why Weird Al has, he can do like beat it, you know, and just call it eat it because it's legal to make a parody of a song, right? If, in copyright laws. So like imagine in tattooing, like, you know, or like you have an image, you don't have to necessarily make an a parody of an image, but you're making your own representation of an image, you know? So it's, it, it breaks up that, you know, thing that it's not like necessarily you're not like plagiarizing it or, or, or whatever that would be in, when it comes to like copyright things. So this is going back to what we were talking about with the Ataris and Don Henley. So with that cover or any cover in general, do you not have to have permission to make a cover of a song if you're going to change like the style of it? You do not. Oh shit. I always thought you needed permission of it. You do not. If It's different that if you take the song and like uh, put it, <clears throat> if you're making a cover of a song, it's different than if you're taking like a portion of the song and including that portion directly into your song. Right. Like sampling it. Yeah. Yeah. You can do your own rendition of a song and that's fine. That's wild to me. Cause it's still, you're taking like the written, like the written music of it and you're using that. I know, but check it out. I was, I wanted to show you this thing. I'm going to go grab this book. Hold on. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. I wonder what the legalities are about like sampling. You know what I mean? Unless it's, is it like you, you only get so many seconds or, I mean, cause you can't sample an entire song, obviously. Right. But you can sample three or four seconds of it repeatedly and that's okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's like, there's, I, I don't know the exact rules of that, but there is something, but there's this book that we got here. It's called creative copies. Right. And when you look through it, there's all of these art pieces that are being redone by other artists, you know? And it's, for example, like things like an etching that then became like a, a pastel drawing of another artist, you know? And <clears throat> they're all copying each other, just making different renditions of it. Like sometimes it's like a sculpture and then some guy paints that sculpture. And then that painting of that sculpture becomes new art. Right. You know? Like fan art? It, I don't know what you would call that. I mean, like I say, it would be kind of like fan art, I guess, but it's like, it's still like afterwards, like that painting gains tons of value, you know, not no, as its own thing, as its own thing, not just as like, oh, it's, or like, uh, I think something that's easy for everybody, every tattoo or ever, like the, the Poseidon, you know, the one famous Poseidon right. that a bazillion people have probably tattooed, you know, like that thing is also like a sculpture, you know, and somebody painted that. And then from there, a bunch of people have drawn it, redrawn it, repainted it, or used it for reference in some way or form, you know? So I feel like that happens in so much art, but in tattooing, it's kind of like a touchy subject. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it gets touchy, but it's, you know, but overall it happens in, in everything. But I thought that this book was crazy because I, I was looking at it throughout the other day because there's so many uh, different ones where it's like, there's a, they're all like amazing artists copying, copying each other just for the sake of like practice, you know, not that it's like, you know, their final projects, but eventually if you become a famous artist and it, Picasso drew something that was from like Michelangelo just to practice, that becomes really expensive art. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> well, that's cool that she won, that Kat Von D won. Yeah. That helped everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so. What you been up to, man? A lot of stuff. This has been like the busiest month of my life, I feel like. Got a new recording studio, trying to move into there. Got a bunch of guest artists. Like the shop has been getting a, a, a hell of a lot of guest artists lately. A lot of really good ones that I'm happy about. It's awesome. Um, but yes, yeah, so just so much shit going on. I've got, since I got this new recording studio, we've got a lot of big projects in mind. Um, now that we've got the space to do more, you know, so I'm hoping, uh, trying to keep something secret, but I'm trying to, I'm hoping it like really takes off and becomes something big. Sick. Sick. Uh, one of the, my favorite things that you do is your critique videos, you know? So we're happy to have you here today and do a critique video with you. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of rad. Um, <clears throat> what motivated you to start doing that? Um, well, I started a YouTube channel for like, like I was just doing time lapses at first, like drawings and tattoos. So I was putting all those uh, pieces of art on YouTube for that, just for people to see. But then I started to get a lot of DMs. I'm sure you guys get the same thing. People will ask you like, Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this tattoo or whatever? 
And uh, it just got too much. I like, cause I want to respond to everybody, but you can't, you can't respond to everybody. Yeah. So I just thought it would be an easy way to, um, you know, funnel all these uh, questions into there. And at first it was, you know, maybe four or five people that I was trying to answer. And then once I put my email up there that I was like, Hey, if you want your shit critiqued now, it's now the inbox is just, you know, we'll go through it flooded, and, you know, f- throw a dart on the wall and pick one. Uh, but we've segmented them out into like, we'll do an artist episode. We'll do a, um, collector episode. We'll do an apprentice episode and then we'll do a TikTok and a Reddit. So there's five different episodes that we make geared specifically towards, you know, one of those categories. Um, but it's just to help people out, you know, especially when it comes to the apprentice episodes or the artist episodes, it's like, uh, I want them to be funny because I don't want them to be very boring and drab. So like the, the comedy, if you call it like carries it, but they, I also want them to be informative. Um, and I'm, like, I know gatekeeping is a touchy subject in tattooing, but I don't want anything to really feel gatekeepy. It's like, if you want to, if you want to learn, I feel like anybody should be able to tattoo. So it's like, if you've got some questions, send them over. But a lot of times, more times than not, I get really bad tattoos sent over. Yeah. So if they're very bad and it's more, it's more than five minutes can explain. I usually just pass over those, you know, unless there's something I can really tell to help them. But I get people that are tattooing out of their homes. They send stuff over. And, you know, like I said, it's, I, I try not to critique anybody that's at home tattooing because that's, you know, we don't want to encourage that. Yeah. But, uh, I also understand that not everybody has access to a shop. So if they're doing okay out of the home, you know, maybe I'll bring up those, uh, uh, how I feel about that and, you know, what you can do to maybe get into a shop or get into an apprenticeship. But, um, yeah, I mean, it it just all started because I just got a bunch of questions, I guess. Yeah. I want to ask this question. Why should someone want to get into a shop? Because there's... I personally don't think there's any better way to learn because you're learning from somebody that has experience, especially when it comes uh, to passing diseases and things like that, that you would never think of unless somebody taught you that, you know what I mean? So aside from the art itself, it's just, you know, some people are like, I can do this art at home and I'm doing okay, but they still don't know cleanliness. They don't know clean hand, dirty hand, you know, they could be passing shit to another client or whatever. So I think that's probably the main reason getting into a shop is just to be safe, to be safe. Yeah. That's <clears throat> probably number one, which I think if, if you're one of those guys that are, is working at home now and you're listening to the podcast, you know, take a bloodborne pathogens class, please. At the very least, at the right. very least, you know, like start there. And, uh, it's weird because there's states that don't have any kind of like legislation on like, or, or licensing or anything like that. New York does. And you're, you have to, you know, do that. But if that's available to you, go through, go take those classes, man. You're going to learn. And I feel like, you know, most likely you're going to learn, meet other people that are on the same path as you are. And I think that that's very helpful. Yeah. Illinois, I don't think has like a tattoo licensing, you know, we just have to, you have to be in a shop, uh, a licensed shop, but as far as like personal license goes, there's no such thing as a personal license. The BBP is pretty easy too. Like there are places that you can go in person, take the course and then take the test. But a lot of it you could do online also. Yeah. And it's super easy. Like there's, not that there's no reason not to do it, but it's so stupid easy that you, there's pretty much no and reason not to do it. we should know better. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's knowledge, right? <clears throat> but when you're trying to learn, like even like, you know, if you do like a online course of, you know, BBP or whatever, like if you're trying to learn, you're going to actually learn something, yeah. you know, unless you're just like, I'm going to just hit this, whatever, multiple, you know, A, B, A, B, A, B <laughs> until, <laughs> until I pass this thing. But like, I feel like most people that, you know, if you're going to take that, you're probably going to try to at least learn something from it. And I think that there is something there to learn. Um, but we always try to motivate people to um, go to a shop and learn from, from people with experience because right. there's so much value in that apprenticeship. If it's a good one. And even if it's a bad one, there's still shit that you can learn. Like I'm not doing that. Right. You know, and then you can find somebody else to teach you. <laughs> yeah, no. So that was like my personal experience too. I grew up in a town with a uh, one tattoo shop. It was two at the time. Um, but the next closest tattoo shop was 45 minutes away. So that was like, uh, it wasn't feasible for me to go to out to another shop and me and the main tattoo shop owner at the time were fighting. We didn't like each other, you yeah. know, cause like I was tattooing out of my house and he was just like fucking ponies work sucks. And I was like, Woody's work sucks. And we are going back and forth. Uh, we just hated <laughs> each other. But the other shop that was there was this place called grateful threads. It was like a very like hips, like a hippie shop. Uh, like the guy didn't wash his hands when going to the restroom and shit like that. And so I tattooed my friend there, which I was already doing. So he printed out a certificate for me and was like, here, you're a tattooer, which did nothing for me. I just went right back to my home and tattooed. So there, I, I wasn't able to get anywhere, but I was craving that knowledge. Right. So I finally like, uh, the other guy in town finally offered me a job after two years of tattooing out of my house. 
and was like, Hey, will you promise to stop tattooing out of your home if I take you in? And I was like, absolutely. Done. You know, yeah, done deal. But I just, so I understand where people are coming from, you know, especially if they love tattooing, like I loved tattooing, you know, yeah. it's like, there's not much choice for a lot of people out there, especially like in middle America, you know, so I get it. But speaking from experience, if you can get into a shop, that's, there's no better way to learn. Man, today I read a post, of, um, Steph Bastian, do you know who he is? Mm. So Steph Bastian, I think he's from the Netherlands and uh, he, not originally from there, not originally from there, but he uh, made a post. Somebody sent him a message like, look, I love tattooing. I've been looking to start an apprenticeship. I've been looking for it for three years and I can't find one. And his answer was so good. He t- pretty much told him like, look, the everyone wants to get into tattooing nowadays. It's at its peak popularity. Yep. So much, it's super competitive, you know? And I, talking about himself, I moved to another country to be able, cause that's where I got one, that's where I went, right. you know? And like, uh, and now my career is where it's at, you know? But I had to put in the effort and you have to try so hard that you become, that it's undeniable for someone to not give you the apprenticeship. And I think that that's the example that you're making for yourself. It's like, you're like, you know, I wanted this so bad. I just kept going until somebody was like, Hey, I want you to stop doing this at your house. Come to my place. You know? And it's like, you earned that by doing that. It might've not been the best road, you know? Right. Sure. But it was the road that you paid for yourself. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes it takes that, you know, somehow. There's another funny story. So the other tattoo shop that was, like I said, 45 minutes away, uh, that was the other closest one. I knew I wasn't going to Woody's shop at first. That's where I ended up learning a lot. But I think I it's so funny that it was Pony and Woody. <laughs> <laughs> Pony and Woody. <laughs> it's, it's a good duo. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. So the other shop that I ended up going to, um, and I ended up driving 45 minutes and I was like, hey, I really want this apprenticeship. You know, I'll do whatever, whatever it takes. Like, show me how to clean tube. Show me how to do all this stuff. So he showed me how to do all this stuff on day one. And he's like, this is going to be your job. And I'm like, all right, sick, cool. Uh, and then I sat up in the lobby and I just, you know, like waited cause I was just hanging out in the tattoo shop. I thought it was cool, but I wasn't hired on as an apprentice at that yeah. point. He was just showing me like, this is going to be your daily tasks. It's like, all right, sick. So I showed up the next day and he's like, oh, we're going to have to let you go. It's just not working out. And I was so bummed. I was like heartbroken. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So I went back tattoo out of the house. And then when Woody hired me into his shop, he's like, you know, I told him not to hire you. Right. And I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> like, oh oh shit. So like I, every route I tried, I wasn't getting anywhere yeah. until I got into that first shop with Woody. But I wonder how many people listening are like, what, what do you mean clean tubes? <laughs> what do you mean tubes? What is a tube? Did I miss that making needles and whatnot? <laughs> I don't um, miss that at all. Like, that was the worst. That was the worst. That was I like, like making needles. You like making yeah, needles? Yeah, I thought that was pretty Something fun. about it. Breathing in that flux. <laughs> <laughs> Something about chemicals in the morning. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, dude. It wakes you up. Early on when I was an apprentice, I was in the back scrubbing tubes and the clean room had Caucasian colored gloves. So I'm out there scrubbing tubes and one of the guys comes back and he thinks I'm just barehanding these tubes <laughs> in the ultrasonic. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, well, you do He's like, oh shit, I thought you were barehanding that. <laughs> Damn. Somebody the other day sent me a message because I posted a video of somebody making needles and I was like, oh man, this is kind of a dying tradition. I miss it. And he's like, oh, you really shouldn't use tattoo needles that have been soldered. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like what? <laughs> Every needle is soldered. But yeah, I thought that was funny. What did he think that you were supposed to use? Couldn't tell. Okay. I don't know. But yeah, I thought that was silly. Man, I have a solid question. I don't know if anybody has answered to this, but most needles are made in China, right? I would think so. Okay. I would love to go to China and watch this happen. Just go to a trip to China and just see how all of these needles are getting made. Right. Are they wearing masks? Are they just doing like, like what is... The f- how does this happen? Is it machines? Is it just a bunch of people sitting there? Like it's a bunch of four year old kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I really am very curious. So if you know this answer, please drop this in the comments right now because I would love to know. Yeah, because I know a lot of companies are like they don't want to show you their process. You know, like uh, because I used to like sell needles and stuff too, or repackage needles. And I'm asking these companies that are making the needles, hey, can I come and watch how that's done? And they're like, oh no, no the <laughs> shop's being cleaned this week, or you know, they'll give you some excuse, but. Yeah. I mean, they make them in Germany. They make a, you know, but I, I know there's like, what, like five different factories in China that would just re- repackage them for different companies. Yes. And then obviously Cheyenne's in Germany. 
So they are outside of China as well. Okay. Right? They've got to be made from machines, right? Just on an assembly line, just, I would imagine. I would imagine that we have this technology to do that. Yeah, but they have to be. I don't know. I just want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to know. So if you have an answer for this, please send us a DM if you know. Or if you've seen this, please come on the podcast and talk about it. Yes. Yeah. We would love Maybe to know. One. Yeah. I love to know the details of how the back end of the tattoo industry works. The part that we don't know. Or maybe you don't want to know. Ah, sadly, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I like the dirty secrets. Um, Imagine if none of the needles are sterilized and they just put like a printed color dot <laughs> yeah. on the packaging. <laughs> it would oh, be cheaper. That's brutal. Yeah, it would be cheaper. <laughs> oh, shit. That just made me think of everything. I'm like, fuck, I don't believe anything. All right. Well, let's get into it, guys. Yeah, let's do some critiques. Well, I love bacon, so let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, our first submission comes from Tattoos by Bacon. And he sent over a couple of images that he tattooed. And he said, uh, I think I sent these to you in order. He said the first tattoo he loves, the second tattoo he likes, and the third tattoo is meh. So that's how he wants us to take that into Fair. Similar feelings. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's, I think I really like the, the style of this first tattoo. Uh, when I used to do color portraits, they would come out a bit painterly and I didn't want them to. I wanted the, them to come out more realistic. It's, I was always beating myself up. But like when I look at this tattoo, it is painterly and I love it. I think it's I really that cool that it's painterly. I don't know if that's right. the intention, but whether it is or not, this is fucking cool. Right. I think yeah. it's cool. Yeah. I like this. Yeah, same. It's got nice sharp edges to it. I dig it. I like the green in the chest. <laughs> it's weird, but again, it, it looks good. Yeah. I don't know if it's just the photo, but like the, it looks kind of bluey on like the beard. Mm -hmm. I just wish that was just more black. Right. On, on the under, underside of the chin. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's about it. It looks kind of bluish you that, know, yeah, or, that's the, or, or just not saturated enough. The only spot that I had a problem with is it feels like the, the beard is kind of blending into the shadow of his neck. Like that gets a little confusing looking. And he does have a little baby ear, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a really cool tattoo. Yeah. I think it's cool. And you know what's cool? I'm glad that you're here, Pony, because when he asked me to critique this stuff, I was like, I can't even do this. So uh, how am I going to critique you and give you advice on something that is beyond what I could do? No, sure. But yeah, I mean, you could, I mean, but as a viewer, even as like a client, you can tell, like I send all my tattoos to one of my friends who's not a tattooer because he can give me his, like, uh, you know, his, his, his first perspective on it or whatever you want to call it. Like he, he lets me know what's good and what's bad. And I think he's got a good eye for it but he could never tattoo anything like I tattoo. He doesn't tattoo at all. Yeah. But uh, I mean, anyone can critique really just let you know your thoughts about it. You know, that's art. I'm assuming this is not red at all, but I'm assuming that this is fresh. Yeah, it looks fresh. How right? do you think that this will heal? Hmm. You're right. That's not really red at all, but it, peculiar. I don't know. I think it should heal okay. It looks like they're, uh, most of the colors are packed in there pretty well. I mean, not a lot of uh, smooth blends, but again, I think it works well for the piece itself. Like, even though it's not smooth, I kind of like how strong some of the shadows are because it gives it a lot more structure yeah. overall. Right. So if like, if it's sitting far away from you, the, the, that really strong, like just brown on the cheeks, you know, like it really just creates that shape and it blocks it out. So it's, there's a lot of like color blocking there and I feel like it makes sense. And there's things about it that I just, I, I like it, you know? Yep. And I think that even as this tattoo ages, you know, it's going to get softer. Sure. You yeah, know? Right, right. Like right. that thing is going to get softer and it's going to look even more painterly and those tones are going to smooth out even more. So it doesn't bother me because overall it has like really good contrast. Um, yeah, the contrast is great. I think if you were to turn that thing in black and white, it would look great. I don't do know that. if he did that lady head next to it, but I wish I could see more. I know. Right? <laughs> yeah. Even black and white, that thing looks great. I was literally doing that right now. How like, do you do that? Just desaturated that thing. Oh, you're looking at it on your camera. Yeah. yeah, on my yeah, phone. yeah, yeah. Just I, I'm still, I'm still on the Instagram messages. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Like, especially you after you desaturated on, on, on your phone. And like, that's when I'm like, oh man, I wish that beard was dark. Yep. And that chin, like one thing, everything. Yeah. Yes. As soon as it went gray, I was like, oh man, if the thing was really dark right there, it would be way stronger mm -hmm. overall. Even like the little bit of like, uh, of hair, like by the ear that looks like tiny, you know, 
Like if that part was just darker back there, it would even be better. It would just like, if that's the dark part back there, just make it dark. Yeah. Just liking blacks. I think that's a lot of people's problem though, is liking black. That's a good tip though. If you're going to do um, a portrait or any tattoo really, before you start coloring it, convert it to black and gray or black and white on your screen and boost the contrast. Very much so. Even I even do that with my color sometimes. If you take a picture of all your inks on the rack and then put it, desaturate the, the ink bottles and you can see like what colors are going to contrast what, you know, some are too close to each other. Yeah, so yeah. Like maybe avoid those. But yeah. I, you know, it's just like looking in a mirror. When you do a tattoo and you look at it in the mirror, it looks different. Right. Know? But you can tell like where you fudged up or whatever. Yep. Cool. All right. You want to move on? Yes. Let's go to the kids skateboarding. Well, there's that. I'm kidding. So I did see this one on a Facebook group and I think I just, uh, if I remember correctly and I don't know if I'm telling too much information, but he wanted to do a skate park behind this. Okay. Character, which if it were me, I would have not had any of those shades back there whatsoever. Is that why he did that gray shading in the background? Because he wanted to add a skate park to it? I don't know if that's the reason. <laughs> like, but overall, I think it's, it's just, I, I have a, I hate when tattoos have that like just gray yeah. or black all around it with any kind of shape or reason or. Right. Well, especially because he's wearing all black. I was like going to say that. Yeah. yeah. There's no need for that at, no all. Need, at all. No need for any shades. Maybe, maybe a little behind the helmet, but even if you were to have like a very thin outline around the helmet. That'd be it, fine. Save it for next time for when you put the skate park. But right now you're going to have a uh, a bit of trouble putting anything in there without it looking dark. Yeah. You're 100% right. My biggest beef with this tattoo is that little baby arm, bro. <laughs> that little baby arm down low, bro. That right, that right arm. <laughs> it's just like, oh man, they used to call him nubby. <laughs> like, oh man. That's, that's my biggest beef with this tat overall. But like, you know, when you see it, you're like, oh, there's this kid skateboarding right away. And you're like, what's up with that little baby arm back there? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's so funny is at first glance, when I looked at this, I thought that this was really, really good. And I didn't even think about the black until you just brought it up. It, it makes total sense. The black in the background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, my mind just went straight to, man, this is tiny, but it's clean. Like, I could clearly see what exactly this is. Like, I don't know what the shirt says, but it for it being that tiny, like, it's crispy. Yeah, it would have been even crispier without that shade for sure. For sure. The shirt looks like when AI does text on things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, it looks like what Russian sometimes looks like to me. <laughs> yeah. Like I can't read it at all, but it's there, you know? Yeah. Um, but overall, like, yeah, man, it's like the, the, the background is so dark and the shirt's dark. Maybe this, I don't know. It could be that this heals up and that background gets a little lighter, but it still feels dark. Yeah. I honestly don't know if that's going to heal up that much lighter. And if it does, good job. But again, job. still unnecessary. Any kind of shades in the, in the background are unnecessary. Uh, and I feel like maybe this artist is just, um, I don't know, using their mag too much because even on the bottom of the skateboard, it almost looks like a shade on the bottom of it when that could have just easily been, again, a three-round liner or something liner. to tighten that up. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, don't be afraid of liners because you can hide those small lines with shades. But when I look at this in the pants and stuff like that, it just looks like it's been all magged in, which makes it not as crisp as it could have been. For sure. It's the idea that like, for some people, when they do realism, like liners are bad. Right. They like, if you use liner, it's going to just, it's not going to look realistic anymore. It's like, no, it's a tool. Just yeah. use it and in it the right, better. and it'll look better. Just sharpen up what you need to and soft what you need to. And like, a huge thing is like he put all this great background, but some reason it stops at the skateboard above it. You know, like when, if it would have been just a little whip below the skateboard, just a tiny bit, you know, then, then it would, that background would really fall in the background. But the fact that it just stops at the skateboard, I'm like, oh, you could just yeah. soften it up a little more, but it should be just be overall lighter. Yeah. I just think, I mean, a liner could have saved him. Even looking back at that uh, first one, it's just, there's not, I just don't think there's enough lines, you know? Like I know that's painterly going back to the first one, but yeah. use some lines in the eyebrows, use some lines in the beard, uh, the skateboarder, the entire thing could have had a thin outline around the entire perimeter, no background. Uh, and it would have made everything on this tattoo crisp. You know, I just, I don't see much use of liner at all. You know, maybe in the helmet a little bit, a little bit on the bottom of that right sleeve. 
but yeah, not much else. You know what the thing is wild about this? That these are, this is the same artist yeah. as right. you know from the last tattoo. And to me, the the first tattoo looks more difficult to accomplish. You know, and like he just. Mm -hmm. And then the other one to me would be like, oh, this is simpler. It's like just this little kid skateboarding, but there's just decisions made. I don't know. I wonder when they were made, like, uh, as far as like career time, you know, like were they done around the same time or just. I think they're probably, yeah, probably made around this uh, similar to the same time. Do you think I, they started that black and gray shading and was like, well, we're here now. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, let's go. I would, I would imagine that if someone's going to send it a critique, it'll be more recent stuff. Just recent things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Moving on. Third, Moving on. Third tattoo. Third tattoo. Same problem. I feel like at least the back, the black in the background on this one makes more sense. I don't like the shape of it, but I understand why he yeah. thought it needed to be there. I mean, you got to have an exit strategy, right? Like, it's a tough one. Put the... if. If you're gonna put black in a background around something like this, maybe give it a shape, maybe put a rectangle behind there so you've got, so it's containing something, right? Because right now it just looks like an oval or a potato background. Um, Cause I mean, the, the, the structure itself isn't bad. I think I did see the reference on this. Um, I just think they really need to slow down. You know, the face isn't bad. There's, I mean, you could t clearly tell what everything is here on this one. Um, and the black does look good. But yeah, if you were to have like, if that were me, I probably would have had a rectangle up throughout the entire thing, put some black on bottom and faded it up into nothing, faded it up into their skin tone. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I could find this reference. I don't know who that is or where that comes from. Oh, what's the name of this freaking saint? Um, this is one of the saints that, uh, fuck. What is his but name? It, it just seems like they're not like building their layers. If Like if they're trying to do really smooth black and gray, it just seems like a lot of it's just quick whip shaded in. Yeah. So that was the one thing that I noticed on this. It seems like everything is one tone of gray. Right. Right. Yeah. And there could have been some nice curvature there, you know, especially in the front, do some nice highlights. The, the nipple on this guy that's right in front, it's like, it's like a bullseye. Right. <laughs> I can't not look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see, I wish I could see that reference because you'd imagine there would be shading up around that nipple, right? So it's not so in your face. <laughs> if I had to guess, and this would be the issue that I would have with this tattoo, is that it's just too small. And it, I mean, people do great tattoos really tiny. I'm not one of them. And if I were to ask, if I were to get asked to do this tattoo, this size, I think I would run into very similar problems where it just, it doesn't look <clears throat> as crispy. Yeah. Like, that's, especially with the fingers. But I, I feel like that's from like, a. I mean, that might be my favorite part though. The I fingers. Mean, yeah. I, Cause I mean, I don't hate me bacon. Uh, I'm just not a fan of a lot of the stuff here. And I mean, it is, it, it almost looks like it's going to their wrist up to their ditch. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that's not that small. Yeah, I don't think it's, this tattoo's that small. Like I, um, it, for the, the stuff that I do, that's pretty tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I, man. I don't mean that. The I think tattoo as a whole is small, but yeah. all the details. The details are, are small. small. That and uh, I mean, I would do this exactly the same size. And I think the biggest thing is like the. I think the reference that he used was probably very low quality reference. You know, like very too soft or, or not sharp enough. And, uh, either his stencil wasn't like strong and because there's so many shapes here that are like all that musculature that's in that body, you know, like you can make the look really sharp, you know, mm -hmm. but you really have to either a understand anatomy or have a really good reference, you know? So either the reference was really soft and he wasn't able to like sharpen all these things to make it look a lot more just stronger overall. Also, I think from looking at this tattoo, you also see that he doesn't use a liner, you know, right. when he's doing things that much at all. And because he feels like he's, he's going to take away from the tattoo, but there's so many things that could be just sharper and a lot more like precise that would just give you a lot more detail and overall make it more appealing. I think I may have found the reference. There we go. Found it. What is the name of the saint? Saint... I'll find out. Well, I well, how did you find it? It's it's on that group. Uh oh yeah yeah John you're right like it's a very washed out looking photo. I mean it's a painting. Right right but I mean make it look like a painting right. Yeah yeah he added a lot more 
shadow like into the rib cage and like it is saint sebastian guys that's who that is Damn. okay you found the photo uh i just googled it. i was like same with arrows in them <laughs> 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 and it's saint sebastian okay there you go. all right now we can compare so i mean again the black background i think would have been all right it doesn't it didn't have to be that black maybe going up because even on this edge, it's still dark. So they could have still gotten away with no background. Yep. Right. Um, but I think they went kind of crazy with the, with the muscle tones. Yeah. This is you it. Know? For sure. I think yep. th that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think that's just, you know, if they were to slow down and really build those layers from like light, like a two drop black or something like that, and just slowly build those layers in there, it would have looked a lot cleaner, would have looked a lot lighter. Man, that's a hard reference to work from. Dude. It is. It's a hard, you need to know. You need to know your anatomy. Your anatomy hard. You need to be Matt Buck on this. <laughs> <laughs> you need to you need to know all of these muscles that are there to be able to just show that minimal amount of the muscle to be able to be like, oh, that's what it is. Yeah, because there's so not they, that much. There's not right. that much there. So you, it's the most minimal bit of shading, but you know exactly from the painting, you're like, oh, yeah, that looks exactly as it should. But to translate that into a tattoo, that's you need to know your anatomy. Yeah. That's the, when you go like, ah, oh, we need a different reference unless you know. Cause even if you take this and you like turn up the contrast, I think you still don't get enough info. No, I get Like I just think their biggest thing is speed probably. Cause obviously they're not going to use a lot of liners in that whole entire torso. No, it's soft. They just, it, it looked like they just dipped in their medium gray and just whipped that stuff in, especially on this piece right here in particular. By the belly button. Mm -hmm. Like if that wasn't there, I feel like that stomach would, would look a lot more realistic, but they added some kind of extra, I don't know, extra muscle tone there. Right. Like I see where they were, I see where they're coming from, but it just looks like they saw that and went, went, went for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I see what you mean about slowing. Yeah. They definitely needed to slow down, slow down. All right, let's move it along. We got a couple more from our anonymous submission. I hate being mean with these tattoos, but I would be anonymous too if I said. <laughs> <laughs> so the next few are coming from, so actually both of these came from our Patreon supporters and shameless little plug. If you want to become a Patreon supporter and help support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash honest tattooer and sign up to help support the show. And we normally take critiques from people who support the show, but we're open to taking critiques from anybody, but the Patreon supporters are the people who get priority. So this next one comes from someone who wants to re remain anonymous, but she did write, she's been tattooing for 12 years. She opened up a small shop six years ago. It's just her and two early artists in hindsight, she says she thinks not working around other artists has kind of stunted me in a lot of ways. And I feel like I should have progressed a lot more in the time that she's been tattooing. She switched between gray washes and black and water cups in these pieces that she submitted. She prefers the latter. So I guess she prefers just having black and dipping it into her water cup. And she's saying that she struggles with her gray tones. And I asked her, how long is she taking on these pieces? Because I felt like they were rushed. And she said three hours. Yep. Wow. That's fast. That's fast. That's way faster. Fast for things like this. Boy. Yeah. Three hours on both of them. I guess on Probably. all of them. Yeah. 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 I mean, that Chucky should have easily taken double that. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the Chucky. At least they're using liners. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The, the, the hair. There's something to the hair, right? I don't know. That's just, I just see so many missing elements, like in the mouth. There's just like, it, I don't know what happened there. Like, it looks like he has lips on one side, no lips on the other. It's just not being around people, I think is like, she knows that's, that's her biggest issue because she's not learning anything. Yeah. Honestly, once she said that this was three hours, I felt like there's nothing I could tell you other than to spend more time on this. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm slowing down. Slow that, down and spend more time issue. on it. Yep. Right. Yeah. Slow down. I mean, layer stuff in, like try those, like I said, try those lighter shades and just give a nice consistent movement to build up the shapes of the face, you know, and especially if you're doing faces and stuff like that, you got to know anatomy. You got to know where the facial planes catch light and shadow. Um, 
because it looks like they did a decent job on the right cheek, like at least building some sort of shape, but it yes. still looks rushed. You know? It still looks too. Yeah, it looks rushed. So something that helped me out a lot when I started doing portraits um, was to make hand stencils, you know, do a hand stencil, you know, that way you can start studying the portrait and following the shapes and creating shapes for what you see. And then after that, when I would start the portrait, I would put a piece of paper towel across pretty much the whole portrait. And I would just look at the bottom of it, you know, just look at the very little bottom, just three, four inches tops, you know, and I would just focus on that. Don't look at the whole thing, right? Look at the, the whole thing. It's going to make you rush through that thing. Just look at the, a little glimpse of it and just focus on that piece and just take your time and make sure that you're matching those tones that everything looks just right. And after you got that, they just move a little, look, release a little more of that. You know, and just working a little bit slower like that will get you to make a sharper analysis of the shapes and tones that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're like doing a tattoo like this and you're looking at the whole thing, it feels overwhelming and you feel like you have to like lay everything out. Like you said, you have to start mapping out all these blacks right away. And, it, and then you feel like you're rushing through that whole thing. So sometimes just doing something as simple as that. And I think like for people that do uh, this kind of work, you need to be drawing this kind of shit. Right you need to draw this, you know, if you want to do realistic looking tattoos, do realistic looking drawings, see how you approach a realistic drawing, how long it takes to build those shapes and tones. It takes a while, you know? So it's grab a pencil, slow it down and you will get better, mm -hmm. you know? And the more that you do it with a pencil, the less tattoos like this you're going to create, you know, right. that are just like, just not hitting the mark. How do you feel about trying to do a portrait with just black and water cup? I mean, I've seen people do it and I think it can work great. Um, you know, especially if you know what tone is in your reservoir, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like if you know what tone's there and you can, I knew this one guy, super old school tattooer, but he would have a running sink and just a cup of black and a half a sheet of paper towel. And he would just use that as his wash. Holy shit. <laughs> but a running crazy. sink. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's wild. Super old school, smallest setup I've ever seen. <laughs> but he could do it well because he knew what tone was in there. You know, if it was something too light, just splash it out on your paper towel and be like, oh, it's a little bit dark. Or, you know, maybe lighten it up a bit. But I think what you said is great. You know, just chop this off section to section. You can always go back in there and stencil in the face later. But if maybe, maybe try a grid system to help you out. Yeah. Something that's just, I mean, we can clearly tell by like the red that that's just pounded in there with barely any ink. Yeah. You know, if your stuff's looking that red, there's an issue. Yeah. Again, I think it's all just speed, you know, just slow, slow your hand movie. You don't need to move a million miles an hour. Maybe yes. listen to some music with some slow BPMs and just, you know, listen slow to some down. prints and just work that shit in baby. Yeah. There's, there's just, it, you can see all the, there's so many max strokes on this thing where it's like, man, just slow down your hand. It's like uh, the one that's right by the right, eye or, or the eye that's on the right, right you know, right. like right below, you see the really strong max strokes, which in certain situations, those, those can be good to have like a little bit of max strokiness when you're trying to create maybe muscles and stuff like that. But on a face, you want that to be really soft, right? you know, and, 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 uh, also I don't know how big of a mag this person's using for me. I like to use big mags when I'm doing things like a face, like face tones, really big mags, soft edges, and I can get those tones to go in softer with less trauma on the skin than if I use like a nine mag that's a flat. But that's just me. There's people that can do it with a flat mag that's not a buck pin and they can get really smooth tones. But that's something that you get like from what she's saying. You got to watch other people do these kinds of things. Go get tattooed by people. Bingo. You know, go get tattooed by people that do this kind of shit and watch their process. Ask questions and you will learn something. And something that you might learn from someone might work or might not. But at least you get to see different approaches to get that result. Because there is no like, you know, try to, this is the only way. It's what a way works for you. Right. And I do want to bring up on the left side cheek here it looks like she was holding her mag sideways. Like she wasn't like, if I were doing this left cheek here, I probably would have been holding my mag down like this, mm -hmm. maybe dragging it backwards. You know what I mean? You can always drag it backwards again. There's no wrong way. So you can like build up these shades, but it looks like she's holding her mag sideways and almost just chopping it in. You yes. know what I mean? Cause same thing with the bottom of that jaw line here. It just looks, it doesn't look like it's, if you're using a curved mag, that should have been really smooth. If you're going along with the jaw instead of against the grain. If that makes sense. 
And one quick thing, girl, yo, shave that tat, shave that leg. <laughs> There's still mad hair on the bottom. <laughs> if you look to the left of like the little overalls and you just zoom into that thing, there's a ton of hair right there. You could just shave it. Man, I had that problem today when I was tattooing the girl I was tattooing today. I felt her leg. I was like, oh, you, you shaved. Awesome. And then I'm tattooing it in. I was like 50% through the line work. I noticed that there's still a lot of hair on this girl's leg. Yeah. But I just, I, I was committed. I was like, I'm not going to start shaving it now. <laughs> <laughs> so I just went with yeah, it. Like, let, let it be. <laughs> you know, but yeah, shave. Yeah, even on the top of the hair, there's a bunch of hair. Just hair. Hair, hair on hair. Hair just, everywhere. Just shave. There's like a bunch of hair. Even where, of hair, yeah. where there's like tattooed. It's like, hey, right. just shave the area. I, I usually try to shave at least like two to three inches above where I'm tattooing anyways. Yeah. You know, even just. It just helps the, with the bandage too. Yes, right. absolutely. Right, right. All right. Deadpool. Let's go to Deadpool. Next. Same person. Same, same person. person. All same person. Some of this looks like it's healed, right? The top looks a little healed, yeah. Like yeah. maybe this is like a touch-up session? Yeah. <laughs> Part of the face looks healed, and then there's like that outside redness, and then the white looks fresh. Yeah, the white looks fresh for sure. And that extra background. Yeah, it's like they did the background the first session and then added some more background. The contrast is lacking like that. The hand on the left side of the photo, it, it's competing with the black of the face kind of getting lost. Like those fingers. I don't know. I feel like this should, that whole hand just should be lighter in my opinion. Yeah. Again, I think it's just a speed, right? It's just like they're going through whipping this stuff in all the textures on the fingers on that left side. It looks like she was just dragging that mag yeah. to create the, like. Yeah, which I, it doesn't look bad. I actually was going to say, I kind of like that look on this one. Right. It makes it look like there's some sort of like glove texture there. Yeah. But, but the, that thing's not going to heal like that, guys. Right. And it's not going <laughs> to age like that. Like, yeah, it yeah. looks all right, but it's not going to. The only time that I've seen people do that and make it look cool is if they're doing hair. Right. You know, like, cause then you, if you're whip doing that kind of drag on hair, if you want to create a little bit of like that hair flow and stuff like that, it looks cool. And then when it softens out, it still works. But on something like this, when that softens out, it's just going to look more muddy in an area where you don't need, really need that. Yeah. Um, Same thing with the top of the head. Yes. One long mag drag. And then the left side looks like they shaded it with liners. Yes. So it just seems like they're kind of all over the place. You know, that should have probably been the easiest part to do is the top of that head. Big mags, like you said, uh, well, what did they use on? We could probably count the needle marks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, some, a piece of advice that someone gave me, uh, actually DJ Tambi gave me this advice on Ink Master. And he was like, you know, always think of like your, when you're doing certain tattoos, you can think of your, um, of your mags, different size mags or different size needles as like, I'm going to use this size needle or this mag for just this part of the tattoo. And it'll look different than if you use a different one on another end, you know? And I feel like that absolutely works in certain things. Like uh, if, if you want to create that texture with a mag, don't use it everywhere, you know, like be intentional. Like, oh, maybe, maybe I will use this texture in just the gloves, you know, because I think that that texture that you, both you guys said, oh, I like that texture, but once that texture is in other parts of the tattoo, it becomes less effective, right. you know? And it just looks a little bit more messy where if she would have just thought, like, I'm going to do this texture in just the glove. So it's really separated from everything else, you know? Because there's no way that you would see it in all of these parts of the tattoo. And I think that that's smart. If you just think about certain mags, it's like, all right, this mag is going to create this grassy field, you know? And then it's like, oh, this other part of this tattoo is going to be with something else just to make it look softer, and you can create texture with, with different needles. Yeah. I'm also curious to know what tools they're using because that can also be a big hindrance. They might end up using like a good technique, but because their tools aren't that great or they're running their machine too fast or whatever the case may be, you know, that can always be a, a detriment to their work. But like, even like the, like the, the wrist on the right side bottom, again, I feel like that's something that could be, if that were layered in there, that could take an hour if you need be, but I mean, it shouldn't be that patchy, right? That should that should be layered like you're mowing the lawn, right? 
do your bottom layer, work yeah. up next, do the next layer, and then go back on top of those and just smooth shade it. Uh, and Nal was at my shop recently, Nal Bersikov. I don't know if you're familiar with his work, but he, I'm constantly learning. He told me something. When he's do almost done with his tattoo, he takes a 15 curb mag on a 2.5 stroke and barely hangs it out of the machine. So he can kind of just go over all this stuff, you know, kind of working in reverse mm -hmm. and just, you're almost like getting rid of the skin tone. But even that I think would have helped a lot on that wrist and even the forehead. For sure. Because it just seems like it's too aggressive. Like maybe they're using too long of a stroke too, because everything's just very aggressive in both of these tattoos. This is a big tattoo to do in three hours. Yeah. Yeah, boy. And whites, uh, another tip that I like to do is like, I only put whites, like if I were to print this out on paper, I would only put whites where I see the tone of the paper. Like if there's any sort of light tone whatsoever, like I imagine there would be um, somewhat of a tone in the forehead above the eyes everywhere, you know, and then only use those whites where they are shining bright and not because, because again, it's like it loses its effectiveness. If you start putting it everywhere, it's just going to flatten the entire image. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think slowing down is the biggest one. Slowing down, <laughs> working around other people so you can see what machines and needles they're using. Because if you're using like a 4.5 stroke or something like that on all this stuff and you're just flying through the shit, that's what it's going to look like. Yep. I had a friend that would do portraits like this and he would be so slow and it would take him sometimes like multiple sessions to do a portrait like this. Yep. But at the end it would look sick. How many sessions did Gabe take to do that bison tattoo? Yeah. That was, I think five sessions. Yeah. And it was probably the same size as this right here. Yes. And whatever it takes. With tons of hair, tons yeah. of, but he took his time. And it looks phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. And it looks great. I mean, you've seen those tattoos that Nico Hurtado used to do. He would like do just the beginning of the suit, you know, and that no would head. be once. <laughs> yeah. 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 But he's like, as soon as you start to feel like you're rushing, stop, you know, come back to it later. So maybe just do the gloves on the first session. Just focus on just the gloves. Come back and stencil that head in later. That's a hard ask for your clients to understand that though. Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I mean- if it's going to make your work better, I don't know. It, if you can get one out of the way and then take progress photos along the way, then that's easier to explain to your client, right? Be like, look, I know it's going to be weird for two weeks, which is not bad. Two weeks, a month, whatever it may be. And then I'm going to put this head on top, but it'll look a lot better. I'm sure they'll be like, okay, <laughs> I don't know. Well, you shouldn't have picked such a complicated looking sweater on this portrait. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to this kangaroo. Sick. <laughs> Yo. Sick boy. This can't be the same person. Right? <laughs> it's the same He's person. the same person. <laughs> I mean, all right. Okay. So we've got some issues with the lines. Blown out city. Blown out city. So we're not getting any solid lines in here. This looks like a tattoo that's over 10 years old, but it's probably not. I don't know how old this is. So if it's not 15 years old, uh, then we've got some issues. It, it looks like... You know, from looking at the last two tattoos that this person runs the machines way too hard. Right. Like just right. hard. Because even hard. when you look back at the Chucky and you look at some of the, the line work, it looks like it would be a blowout. Mm -hmm. You know, in certain parts, you're like, oh, man, I think it looks like it's going to blow out. And then when you see this heel tattoo, you're like, oh, look at these blowouts. Right. Yeah. It, it, same thing with the colors. It's just like, I don't know, man. It's just like they're not slowing down and really just. Packing that in, turn your machine down. I have a feeling that's what it is. Turn your machine down a lot, start as low as you can, and then slowly get, you know, add more voltage to it or whatever hurts, whatever you use, and then just work that shit in like a lawnmower. Cause that brown is awfully patchy everywhere. Yeah. But also the design isn't that great either. Like the kangaroo on the left, it just doesn't, it doesn't look right. It feels like it's something from like a Disney kind of, cartoon or something like that and yes, just from, print it out and just go Winnie the Pooh. I think, it's from Winnie the Pooh. I, I, oh. I could be wrong, it, but it looks like Winnie. Yeah, yeah it, it looks does like some, look like Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, right? It looks like Winnie the Pooh, like one of those kind of drawings, cartoons or whatever. And it just, yeah. But even if you were to have solid outlines, this thing would look a ton better. Yes. It could be shitty Chinese cartridges. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, I think a lot of, for this person, uh, focus on your basics still. You know, I think like you're, you're, you're biting a little bit more than you can chew. Right. And if you can't pull tattoos. off this tattoo as a solid tattoo, if these are all within the same time period and you can't pull off this tattoo, there's no reason you should be doing that Deadpool. Yes. 
I know that might hurt to hear, but f- focus on your fundamentals. Make make solid palm sized tattoos before, you know, get your lines down before g- doing shading and then get your shading down before doing bigger tattoos. Cause it's all going to come with time, but you can't rush into that stuff. Cause you're just going to, you're going to develop bad habits by doing that. For sure. And we, and when you decide to be a tattooer, you got to take the responsibility of being able to admit this is above my pay grade. I'm so sorry. I, this is just, not, I can maybe redraw this in a different way where it can fit what you want, but this is just not where I'm able to do at the moment, you know? Right. And like, uh, because this person is in a shop by themselves with the other inexperienced artists, you know, if when you're in that position and you're working with people that have less experience, less experience than you, and you're still not that great, you know, those people that are working with her might be like that Deadpool looks sick, yeah. you know, cause they couldn't pull that off, you know? Right. But, uh, that's not going to make you better. It's not going to make them better either. And it's not going to make them better either. They're going to just, you know, everybody's setting a very low bar of a standard for each other. And, uh, a bunch of ego fluffing is happening in one room right. <laughs> and, and that's just not good if, if your goal is to get better. And if you're willing to submit your work to us, even though you decided to not, you know, you know, reveal who you are, uh, it, it still shows that you at least care, you right. know, to, to want to get better and for people to give you advice. So, I mean, either you should, since you already have your shop, I would recommend for you to start, you know, want, go get tattooed by good people. You know, start doing tattoo conventions and just visiting and watching, you know, I, I think like when I would do tattoo conventions and, um, I, w- I would, there, there were people that I would see them stand over like Nico and watch a whole like eight hour tattoo, dude. They would yep. just go come back and just watch a whole eight hour. Cause they were just trying to consume and absorb as much information as they could. And I think that you need to do that for yourself. Yeah. It's all an investment. Take seminars. You know, it's, and I know people are like worried about standing over people like Nico, like they don't want to bother them if they're standing over the entire time. But a lot of people won't mind. Like if I'm at a convention, I don't mind if people come and watch for an hour, two hours or whatever they want to do. If it's going to help you out at all, be my guest. Yeah, a chair. for sure. And trust me, if you go stand by, you know, Pony's booth for a couple of hours and he has merch there, buy a bunch of it. It's going to make him feel a little bit better <laughs> that you stood there for like three hours right. for sure. You know, <laughs> like, you are like, oh, this person's supporting what I'm doing. Cool. Yeah. You can watch. Maybe you'll ask a question. It's cool. You know? Yeah. 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 I mean, bring that shit on for me, me personally, bring that on. Any, any questions you can ask, like, I'm not going to be bothered if you ask a hundred questions. I know that's not for everybody, but I don't mind because I don't know. I just want to help people learn. Right. And, uh, I know sometimes I can be brash on my channel or even with these tattoos, but somebody has got to tell you, you know, the people at your, at your studio aren't telling you. I think overall, most tattooers that, you know, are like us who are willing to, you know, put out this kind of content and talk to people overall, we like to inspire other people to do better and to do well. And there's something very fulfilling about, you know, Maybe this person submits their tattoos two years from now. And they're like, hey, you know, what you said that day really hit me hard. And I really kind of just, you know, took a road at that point. And I was like, fuck, man, that feels great to right. hear, you know? So I feel like, man, if you're at that point in your career, really just focus on yourself and, and you know, who cares? You might, you know, go to an artist and like, yo, scram, I don't want you to see my shit. But you might find somebody else that tells you like, yeah, man, oh, you have something here. Yeah, you could do this better. And- Overall, it's just, it's, it's hard finding an apprenticeship. It's hard to be a tattooer. It's hard to get good. But if you put in the work, you can find it. Right. We're and, at the stage in the industry right now where there's more people willing to give you information than not. For sure. So like, like we're saying, if you go to a convention and one guy says, beat it, you know, I'm not going to give you information. Go to the next booth. I guarantee the next guy next to him is going to be able to tell you what you need to hear. Right. Yep. Yeah. And just draw more. Right. Like that's always there. That's always free. Nobody's going to bother you for drawing more yeah. or fake skins, you know, cause that way you're still using a tattoo machine and it's, obviously it's not the same, but get there's online seminars you can buy, you know, so you don't even have to go to a convention. You can just buy a $500 video online or whatever. It's all an investment, you know, Yeah. invest in yourself. And invest in a better camera, invest in a CPL <laughs> filter. Like, God damn, like, all three of these, you know, right. Tattoos, even, uh, bacon tattoos, you know, like it's like, Hey man, you're just take better photos of your work. You know, it's, uh, you know, when you go to a gallery and you see art 
are displayed, it's displayed with intention and with care. Take care of your shit too, you know? Put my some first, love into it. My first year of school, I did gra- uh, graphic design. And I hated doing graphic design. And I wind up transferring out of that. But the best lesson that I learned from doing that course was presentation. And every every piece of homework or assignment that we had to hand in, it could have been done amazing. But if the presentation of it was not great, you failed. Right. Yeah. So it's like John's saying, like you could do an amazing tattoo, but if you take a shitty photo of it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yep. yep. So even little things like this, like how the tattoos aren't centered in the photos, you know what I mean? Like if, if I were to send those to somebody, I would at least crop it to where it's centered. Um, Cause I think it's part of the presentation or I'll see a lot of people that send stuff in where they've just got like a lot of junk in the background, like Coke cans and a bunch of other just random shit. It's like, if, if you can't take the time to take the five minutes to clean that stuff up and get a good presentable photo, then that also kind of shows me a little bit of your, you know, your workflow your ethics, I guess. As you're saying that, I'm looking at all this shit behind you. <laughs> in our shot. I think this is a podcast. But wow. honestly, you can't see any of that shit. <laughs> it's there, but you can't see any of it. And I think like that's, you know, we all work, you know, and I, the end, and I think that that's something that is hard for people when, you know, you tattooed for like six, seven hours and you're tired and your client's tired and you're like, I want the client's like, I want to go home. I'm done. You know, dude, I know guys that are like, cool, man, you're going to chill out. I'm going to put some ointment on you. I'm going to wrap you up and we're going to hang out for another 30 minutes for this thing to just die down and relax. And I'm going to take a good photo of this because after it goes out the door, I might not see this ever again or not for a very long time. So put in that extra time. You know, I think like any opportunity or time that you spend with your clients and that's something that I, you know, I, I live by, man. I love to spend time with my clients because that's when I build my relationships with them, you know? I'm going to get to know them. They're going to get to know me. And because of that, they're going to choose me over other artists. Yeah, just for and I'm experience. going to give them a good tattoo, yeah. you know? So it's like, I think those, the combination of those two things is what will give you long lasting clientele. Give them a good tattoo, but build a great relationship with them. And they're going to rave to their friends about you. And they were like, oh, this guy's amazing. You know, he gave me this cool ass tattoo, but he was so great to hang out with and just spend time with them. You know, and I think that, you know, that also takes time to build that skill. You know, it's not something that comes naturally to everyone. So, you know, and also present yourself, present your work and overall you'll have a better outcome in your career. Oh, show. Oh, show. Yeah. I think that almost feels better. Like in review sometimes when people are like, I just had a great experience, you know, yeah, that hits home. I'm like, fuck yeah. Even though I fucked that tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this Kruger and get it over with. I feel like this is their best piece of work. 100%. I like, agree. Like, I'm, again, not being mean, not the greatest tattoo, but as far as compared to the rest of this one feels like maybe a little more time was taken. There's a little more direction, even in the hat in the top, the gray, even though it just kind of ends, it just feels like it's consistent tone of gray up there. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this one maybe took a little more time. But also this is a very, very difficult to pull, tattoo to pull off. Yeah, really hard. If this tattoo had some really strong blacks, it would just go way up. It would just look way better mm-hmm. yep. off the rip. Cause like, I just took it and I just like turned up the contrast on my phone on this thing. And I was like, oh, that looks way better like that. Like, look at that, that looks killer. Um, and it just looks stronger, but because it's, everything feels so washy, um, it gets lost. A lot of things get lost. Let's see if I can add some shades to this cheek because this is why it helps to know anatomy. Like if there was some sort of like light source glowing or some kind of, uh, you know, on the, on the nose and on the front panels here and on the little bit on the chin and maybe tuck that back part of the cheek back with a little bit of shading. I feel like that would have looked a lot nicer, a lot more dynamic maybe. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. Now, what do you guys think? I kind of like the fact that it's so flat looking. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just, I'm getting, I feel like it, to me, this looks so much cleaner than all the other things that we looked at. And maybe that's why, like, I'm just comparing it to the other pieces. Yeah. 
I don't know. Maybe if I saw this by itself, like even just a little bit of that, I think would take it a long way for sure. You know, just a little bit of shading on the sides. Yep. Can you hold that to the camera? Boom. And again, that's just, you know, taking a mag at the very end of it and just giving it a, you know, one drop, two drop. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so when I look at this tattoo immediately, like the, see where like the, 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 finger blades end, right? That's really dark back there. Yep. So, but the, you see where the hat is right above it? It's not. So I think like if you're gonna, sil if, you, if they silhouetted those like blades at the end and then you still, you make it really solid black where that hat is back there. And then to balance it on the bottom right corner of that tattoo where like against the chin, you make that solid black too, you know, and just whip it out just a little bit. Then you're creating this balance of like, it's really dark down there. And then the opposite corner is also really dark. It brings all the attention, frames the face, you know, and then you have a really good solid contrast around the face where all that focus is. And overall it, it would look to be just stronger, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I, God damn it. I need to stop saying, you know, uh, <laughs> It, it, and shave this fucking person. <laughs> just shave. <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't run out of razors. Why is there so much hair over this glove? There's so much hair there. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, um, hair on the glove. What the hell, boy? Just so much hair. Unless it's just a healed photo and, and that's why it's hairy. But It does look uh, healed. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Fair enough. We take it back. Yeah, I take it back. But those, those to me, those things will overall just make it stronger and um try to find a, a way to commit to the either you're going to use the lines or you're not going to use the lines and i feel like there's places where there's like in the brim of the hat you know there's that really strong line but then right above it, it there starts off as a line and then there's no line and it's like be intentional with the with the line use of like okay i'm going to sharpen this up on purpose and uh there's so many lines on the on the like the burned skin effect where they're darker than they really needed to be. Yeah. Or at least build some kind of shade from them. Right. Like yes. give it those, make it feel like it's divoted in the skin. Like there's some actual crevices and not just lines. I think this, the, the Freddy tattoo with another session could be brought up a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you're like, Absolutely. oh wow, that makes sense. Yeah. Even if it's just like very dramatic shadows, just like a drop shadow coming out from underneath the nose and just like deeper shadows, like underneath the eyes and underneath the brim of the hat to show that there's like a cast shadow coming from all these places. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. That alone, I think would be clutch. That's literally what I just added was the eye, the nose. And the yeah, the hat. there you go. It just makes it nice and dark. How are you doing that? Procreate on or Procreate Pocket. Oh, procreate, shit. that's a thing? I didn't yeah. even know that existed. Procreate yeah. Pocket? What? I don't know that shit right now. Damn. I, I didn't know, know there was a Procreate Pocket. <laughs> now I learned something new. Look at that. Holy shit. Yeah, hold that up to that's the camera. Better. Yeah, I didn't know there was a Procreate Pocket. I just learned something new today. Yeah, if I'm like sitting on the couch or whatever, I want to mock something up instead of getting the iPad out, I just... Damn, uh, one of my favorite portrait artists. Shout out to Harris, you know? Man, we haven't seen him in a while. I haven't seen him in a while. He's been steady, chilling in Texas. But uh, he's a master of just simplifying a portrait where there's like just a ton of black in it to just like, you know, create all these really strong shapes. And I've seen him tattoo where he's doing just solid black for like five hours straight, you know, and then at the last two hours, he's just giving you a little bit of the soft shades. And then it's like, it looks phenomenal, you know, and this tattoo I think would benefit so much with really, really strong blacks all around all these shapes and then just saving softer details, minimal, minimal soft details. And it would just look so strong. You ever take any of those high contrast drawing classes where you have a figure drawing with one light and you're not supposed to draw anything other than the black shadows and the white of the paper and without doing any half tones at all, you should be able to see all the details and the curvature of everything that the shadows are creating. And it's exactly what Tide does. Like just boost up that contrast. It'll really, really help. For sure. That yeah, sounds awesome. I don't think I've ever taken any drawing classes outside of high school. 
they're worth looking into. I know I should invest in myself. I'm <laughs> sitting here preaching it to people. <laughs> yeah. Overall, I think, uh, thank you so much for submitting these tattoos. You gave us something to talk about. Yeah. It takes guts to do that too. For sure. All right, cool. Any last words? Pony, thank you for coming out, man. Oh, of course. Yeah. It's been a blast. That was fun. Yeah. Talking about tattoos is always one of those things where, uh, it helps me looking at tattoos because it reminds me of things that I need to also do in my own tattoos. Yeah. You know, it's just, I think that's, uh, when you, when you discuss things and, and you kind of remind yourself of like, oh yeah, just like you, what you just said. I was like, oh man, I should do this for myself. Right. So I need to practice what I preach. Right, right. And it's like, oh shit. Yeah. I should probably do that too. You know, I haven't done any realistic drawings in so long. And I feel like if I did, it would just, it would just help me grow. It can't help you not grow. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> it'll, and even it'll YouTube, just help like, you grow. There's so much stuff I learned on YouTube. Just like there's this channel I watch called Draw Mix Paint. Um, so when I was doing color tattoos for a while recently, he shows you how to match any color with just red, blue, and yellow, brown, white, and black. And then, so I, my palette was just that for any kind of crazy color portrait tattoo, because he had the rules of like, is this more red? Is this more blue? Is it more yellow? Is it darker? Is it lighter? And then just from that, um, you could mix anything. So that channel is really great for learning, but you could learn so much about light and shadow, anything, contrast, any of that stuff is on YouTube and it's all free. So like, why not utilize it? Right. Just sitting at home on the toilet, <laughs> watch the videos. Oh man, I need yeah, to stop watching reality wisely. shows. Exactly. I, know. <laughs> I just watch dumb reality shows when I'm trying to just detach my brain from art and from everything because I'm just spent from tattooing for like six, seven hours a day every day. I'm like, I'm tired. I can't turn my brain off. I, I get home and I'm like, all right, what else could I, I don't know. It's hard to pull yourself away from it. Maybe yeah. I should watch some real housewives or something. <laughs> <laughs> what do you watch? Oh man, I watch... Um, oh man, this is sad. I watch uh 90 day fiance is my favorite trashy reality show. I'll admit that right now. It is my favorite. I'd love to see the mess just happening. It's great. Um, man. So I talk about this podcast that I, I listen to a lot, making it at the end of every episode, they do a, like what, are, like a recommendation and it's whatever they saw on YouTube that week, whatever documentary, whatever it is, but they, they always recommend something to watch or listen to or read or whatever. I kind of feel, feel like we should start doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we always send each other shit. We're like, yeah. Oh dude, I watch this. Check it out. Yeah. You know? And we just start fucking, uh, so John's recommendation is 90 day fiance. Oh my God. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> so, so good. All right. Let's wrap this up. We're almost two hours in. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Break this up into two Matt months. has to go draw a back piece. I gotta draw a back piece. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching Honest Tattooer this week. We appreciate your support. And uh if you're a Patreon member, thank you so much. That means a lot to us. Uh make sure that you like and subscribe the video and uh talk to us online because we'll talk back. You know I'll talk back. And thank you so much, Pony, for coming and joining us. Oh yeah. Really Thank love you, you like having, and I hope you, uh, that you come back and we catch up and we hear more about your studio and everything you got coming on. I appreciate being here. Thank Speaking you. of the Patreon supporters, there's two that I'd like to give a shout out to. Oh shit. We got two new members this week and they are Matt Birkins. Thank you very much. And Georgia Peach Tattoos. Thank you very much for signing on this week. If you would like to be a Patreon supporter like Matt and Georgia Peach, head over to patreon.com slash honest tattooer and sign up to be a Patreon supporter. Thank you guys so much and have a great evening, morning, or good night.